Hey, so it's another little takeaway from me from novels that I love. And today it's going to be Ian McEwan's Atonement. Oh, I've got that the wrong way around. There it is. <laughs> Atonement by Ian McEwan. Um, sometimes in class, we play a little game of, you know, will this novel last 100 years? Will we still read it in 100 years' time? This book, I am pretty sure, will be read in 100 years' time. Um, you know, uh, not going to be around to prove that, but <laughs> I've got a funny feeling. Structurally beautiful. Um, McEwan just kind of uses your, our own reading strategies to create a certain kind of um, structure, um, which really, you know, we, we get a bit confounded at the end, which I just think is beautiful. But um, anyway, the bit I'm going to read to you today doesn't really have too much bearing on the, the necessarily the plot, but it is interesting in terms of Brian E. Tallis, who is one of the main characters. Um, I won't give away this kind of structural end of the book, but she's she's a central figure in, in the whole book. Um, and at the beginning, she's 13 and she's kind of on, she's dealing, she's starting to deal with adult themes and, you know, she's growing up a bit. She's starting to realise things about the world. And this is... Um, just a very small part of you know her, her characterization, I suppose, showing this development, and it's um, it's about um, her um, watching her finger move. Um, so I'm going to read this uh, again. I'm not the greatest, uh, you know, uh, most fluid, beautiful voice or anything like that, but I'll do my best here. So um, let's have a go with this. So here we go. Um, the silence hissed in her ears and her vision was faintly distorted. Her hands in her lap appeared unusually large and at the same time remote, as though viewed across an immense distance. She raised one hand and flexed its fingers and wondered, as she had sometimes done before, how this thing, this machine for gripping, this fleshy spider on the end of her arm, came to be hers, entirely at her command. Or did it have some little life of its own? She bent her finger and straightened it, the mystery was in the instant before it moved, the dividing moment between moving and not moving. When her intention took effect, it was like a wave breaking. If she could only find herself at the crest, she thought, she might find the secret of herself, that part of her that was really in charge. She brought her forefinger closer to her face and stared at it, urging it to move. It remained still because she was pretending she was not entirely serious, and because willing it to move, or being about to move it, was not the same thing as actually moving it. And when she did crook it finally, the action seemed to start in the finger itself, not in some part of her mind. When did it know to move? When did she know to move it? There was no catching herself out. It was either or. There was no stitching, no seam, and she, yet she knew that behind the smooth, continuous fabric was the real self. Was it her soul? Which took the decision to cease pretending and gave the final command. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. He captures that. Who hasn't done that at some point, you know, when you're a kid? kind of looked at it and said, like, move, I'm going to move my finger, move my finger, move my finger. But somewhere inside, I don't mean that because my finger's not moving. But, oh, it just moved. That's blowing my, <laughs> blows my mind. How is that happening? That's what Brian is doing. Brian is at that point where she's starting to realise the world is bigger than her child world of, like, you know, 9, 10, 11. She's 12, 13, and she's starting to realise something. She's a writer. She's starting to realise things about the world. The world exists outside of that smaller set of concentric circles that she'd been aware of before. Now the world is bigger, and she starts to realise this, which is fantastic for her development, but also has dire consequences for something that happens in the family um, not long after this this period so she gets embroiled in something that gets out of her control pretty quickly and because some of the some of the realizations she has mix in with her still slightly childish view of the world and and have pretty dramatic consequences which she ends up trying to atone for for the rest of the book <laughs> Listen, this is a brilliant chapter. You know, have a go yourself. Think about the join between when you want your finger to move, when your finger moves. Did I make it move? I don't know if I did or not. It's kind of scary. And when you just sit there looking at it saying move, move my finger.
this is weird. Um, Atonement by Ian McEwan, one of the books I love, and a small passage from it. So um, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be back with more. Goodbye.